The war ended and the 10 concentration camps closed. Japanese Americans were given bus or train tickets and $25 to start their lives over. But the nightmare continued when they left the camps. My daughter and I walked and walked and walked. We walked all day long. And everywhere we went, there, there would be a for rent sign. When we'd get there, they'd say, oh, it's rented already. We never could get any satisfaction. And finally, we found one place. The lady took us up to the second floor. And we were so happy because we thought, oh, well, at last we got a place to stay. But then she turned around as she went to open the door. She says, oh, and her face just turned as red as a beet. And she says, I just remembered I rented the place. See, she didn't know we were Japanese or she didn't realize at the time. After the war, Japanese Americans gradually and painstakingly rebuilt their lives. Years passed without much talk of what had happened during the war. But in the 1960s, social movements ignited change and refocused attention on past injustices. Community members examined government intelligence and military documents that showed that Japanese Americans were not a security threat and that there was little risk of a Japanese invasion to the West Coast. With pressure from the Japanese American community, a commission created by Congress was formed to examine the causes of the World War II incarceration. When Executive Order 9066 was signed, that young man was no more. Instead, I was Mark Murakami, Japanese American, dutifully registered to be taken into protective custody. The commission found that there was no military necessity that the real reasons were race prejudice, war hysteria, and a failure of political leadership. Congress passed the Civil Liberties Act of 1988, offering an apology and monetary payment to those incarcerated. We gather here today to right a grave wrong. More than 40 years ago, shortly after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, 120,000 persons of Japanese ancestry living in the United States were forcibly removed from their homes and placed in makeshift internment camps. This action was taken without trial, without jury. It was based solely on race, for these 120,000 were Americans of Japanese descent. The legislation that I am about to sign provides for a restitution payment to each of the 60,000 survivors, yet no payment can make up for those lost years. So what is most important in this bill has less to do with property than with honor. For here, we admit a wrong. Here, we reaffirm our commitment as a nation to equal justice under the law. Eventually, 82,000 Japanese Americans received a presidential apology and a $20,000 payment. For many, the painful memories of incarceration inspire them to fight for justice. You should speak out because if it could happen to you, it could happen to anybody. As long as you're a minority, they can pick on you and they can incarcerate you as they did us. But if you get out there and speak out, and speak out loud, um, I think uh, you will be able to combat those type of things. We should go out there and tell the people and make them remember that this should never happen again. <laughs> 